Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good morning. In today's video, I would like to go ahead and answer a pretty quick question from one of the users inside of our Facebook group. So his name is Alex Bisk, and his question is, should I stick with Objective-C or move with the herd to Swift? Now, I get this question quite a bit in the comments section for each one of my videos, as well as during the Sunday live streams. And I, I think I get this question from people that already know how to build out applications using Objective-C. They know it pretty well, and they're probably curious and wondering if they should just move on to Swift because it's such a new and modern language. Now, this question itself, I remember it was asked a lot more frequently when Swift was just introduced into the iOS development ecosystem. And in the beginning, there was a bit of hesitation from a lot of developers uh, wondering whether or not they should adapt this new technology because it was just so new and no one really knew whether or not Apple was going to fully support it later down the road. And uh, for example, when I was at the company called Touch of Modern, the first version of the application was actually written all in Objective-C. And the reason for that was because in the early year of uh, 2013, Swift was actually not announced yet. So no one really knew that this technology was going to be available. Now, I remember about half a year later, the official version of Xcode was released with Swift support. And like many other developers, I started experimenting with a Swift language by kind of building out very, very small applications. And a few reasons why I do this is because I like to test out how easy it is to actually type out the Swift syntax and see if it's easy to use. And secondly, I kind of like to see how the Swift documentation is written and also presented in the Xcode IDE. And for the most part, it's documented pretty well and it's very similar to the way Objective-C is presented. And then finally, before I, uh, before I adapt a new technology, I also like to perform a lot of compile time checks as well as runtime performance checks to kind of see if you kind of get performance gain or performance hit by adapting a new language such as Swift. So roughly after experimenting during the span of about two to three weeks, everything looked pretty smooth and I decided to migrate all of the Touch of Modern code from Objective-C to Swift and the entire process went pretty smooth and seamlessly uh, using this thing called a bridging header that allows you to access your Objective-C code in Swift. And then finally, when I left the company about a year and a half later, I remember about 80% of the entire iOS repository for Touch of Modern was actually already converted into Swift code. So there was only about 20% Objective-C code left in the entire code base. All right, so back to the main topic. And the question is, do you just learn Swift and kind of leave Objective-C behind? And I think in the year of 2017 right now, uh, the answer is kind of obviously yes. And for me, the biggest reason why I don't really recommend learning Objective-C exclusively is because a lot of the documentation that you need and a lot of the, the blog posts that you'll find that helps you uh, solve the problems that you're experiencing, uh, all of that uh, code is just written in pretty much 100% Swift right now. And so the thing about programming is that when you're trying to learn a new language or a different language, it's much easier to learn by looking at other people's source code. And it's much easier if the source code is written in the same language that you're currently learning. All right, so let me go ahead and move on to some of the major advantages of using the Swift language over Objective-C. And the biggest thing for me anyways is you no longer have to create these .h and .m files. And the .h file is the header file, .m is the implementation file. Now, all of your source code that you write in Swift just belongs in a .swift file. So you don't have to declare these uh, function signatures anymore, which is a lot easier to kind of omit from your code. And the thing about Swift is that you can also include related classes inside of the same Swift file. And then this can potentially reduce the amount of files that you have inside of your project. Now, the second thing about Swift that I think is really nice to have is type inferencing. And this means that whenever you declare variables, you no longer have to declare the variable type if you kind of define it to be something. Uh, the IDE and the language itself will pretty much infer what that type is. And this means that you don't have to uh, type so much anymore. And then finally, you have this thing called optionals that's supported in Swift. And this means that uh, you no longer run into these strange use cases where you're passing uh, messages and you're trying to invoke methods on null objects. And this is a really good thing because 
Uh, because this was possible in Objective C, you kind of get a lot of these crash reports where the message is unexpected nil value found and you're trying to access something on a nil object. And then that's usually not a good thing to do. All right, so there are a lot of advantages to using the Swift language over Objective C, but it isn't all perfect. And the biggest gripe that I have with the Swift language is actually the autocomplete that is provided through Xcode. Now, the autocomplete isn't all that great and it's pretty buggy. I remember when Swift was first announced and started typing a lot of Swift code, uh, the autocomplete actually stops working and uh, the entire source code file just loses its syntax highlighting. And what you have to do is you have to restart the entire Xcode ID editor to make sure your code is back to working condition. That's a pretty annoying bug and I think they've fixed most of it for the most part. Uh, Xcode 9, Xcode 9 beta, which I've been using over the past week or so, everything seems to be a lot more stable, but there are some annoying autocomplete bugs that I'm already seeing that will be pretty frustrating to use uh, over the next year or so. All right, so with all that being said, there's actually a pretty major drawback to using Swift as your main uh, primary iOS development language. And the drawback is that you can't exactly write your own proprietary code inside of Swift and then export that as a framework so that other companies can use it. For example, if you have some kind of proprietary software that does image processing or has some kind of secret encryption technique algorithm to it, you can't exactly make that software closed source inside of Swift. And the only way to write your code so that you don't have to expose it to the public is to first write it in Objective-C and then export it as a separate framework. Now it is currently the summer of 2017, so I'm not sure exactly when Apple is going to announce support for kind of writing proprietary Swift frameworks. All right, so that's going to be it for today's video. I know a lot of you guys probably have your own separate opinions on the matter, so uh, make sure to leave that in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye guys.